I've tried countless times to put into words the adventures we go on and the situations we get into, and I just can't seem to do it. So we're going to show you. We're an international auction company specializing in all things vintage power, antique tractors, vintage cars and trucks, motorcycles, signs and memorabilia. We're not just auctioneers, we're collectors with a passion for every item we sell. But it's not just about the items, it's also about the people. We get to experience, share, and tell the history of our past. Every day is different in the auction industry. You just never know what's coming next. This time, we travel to the 2022 Gathering of the Green in Davenport, Iowa, where Roger gets a special delivery and Brian takes a close look at a beautiful, original John Deere Model D. Plus, we take you on the farm toy adventure of a lifetime. The Pre-30 auction has so much more than antique tractors. There's gas engines, vintage vehicles, signs, tractor parts, implements, and memorabilia. One piece of memorabilia was delivered to the 2022 Gathering of the Green in Davenport, Iowa. It was a gold statue with an interesting history with the John Deere Company. So Roger, what can you tell me about this Henry Dreyfus sculpture right here? Well, actually it was consigned. A guy brought it to me uh, and wants us to put it on our pre-30 auction. I know Henry Dreyfus and Associates started with John Deere um, in, in the mid-30s. Uh, of course, they're the company that was tasked to redesign and make the style tractors for John Deere, the A's, B's, and G's. Um, and I know John Deere used the Dreyfus and Associates clear up into the 7 and 8,000 series uh, design of the exterior of the, of the tractors. So when did they get involved with creating sculptures and the Art Deco side? Do you know? They had the early deers, the copper deers, you know, it was on branch houses and different things. I think, what was there, maybe 10, 12 of those? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Well, these, uh, they had, uh, the story is that Dreyfus designed this statue here and uh, for prominent dealers, branch houses, executives, you know, office. But I don't think a lot of them were produced. I don't know the exact number that were produced, but. Uh, I have not seen one sell for a long time. So they were specifically commissioned by John Deere corporate yes. for those entities, that either the corporate office, uh, whether it be branch houses or uh, high-end dealers. Right, like okay. I think if you sold so many tractors or different things, okay. it's my understanding that okay. you know you might have one of the dealership is, is my understanding of it. So, right. uh, but uh, yeah, I guess Henry Dreyfus designed it more of a sleek deer, you know, from the other one with the, more of the deer style rather than the kind of the European style they used to use. Sure. Well, they used what they called the delk, a cross between the deer and an elk right. uh, design was the early on. I know it's painted gold, but what is this made out of? It, it, it's fiberglass. It's fiberglass, yeah. okay. And uh, But I know there were different styles of these two. I was told there's like three versions. There was like a gold one, and then there's another one that's painted more like the deer. It's brown with the white, you know, I've front seen on. one of them. Yeah. Um, okay. And so uh, there's different, and there's uh, prototypes, there's different things out there. I know uh, I had a small version of this uh, on my auction several years ago that they, not, I don't know, three or four years ago, whenever I sold a few of my things, but it was a little prototype to this, which was kind of okay. neat. It was uh, small, so. But uh, that's about all I really know about them. Uh, era, I'd say 40s, 50s, but I'm going to research that a little more. Well, fiberglass is very popular in mid-50s, so yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense, exactly. Okay. So, yeah, but I mean, it's just more of a sleek and has the leaping deer, still incorporated the log, you know, mm -hmm. and so just a, it's a really neat piece of John Deere history, in my opinion. I mean, it would be really cool if you had, you know, your tractors lined up in your shed and this sitting in the center of it. Oh, it'd be a fantastic centerpiece. Too, oh, wouldn't, wouldn't it, it though? It'd be a great centerpiece for anybody's collection. What year did uh, Henry Dreyfus pass, you said? It was the early 70s. It was, yeah, I mean, and, and then the corporation went on, Henry Dreyfus and Associates, uh, after his death. And like I said, the Deere used them clear up into the seven and 8,000 series designs uh, was the last input they had in the 
design characteristics of the tractor. After that, it was, of course, taken over by Deere. Um, so quite a long run for a company to be associated with John Deere. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, another little funny story just to throw in there, but a friend of mine was passing through earlier, and he had one of these, I guess, that was sitting on top of a uh, local dealership, and he was able to purchase it. But was did, did you hear that story too? Where I did. It had an arrow through it, so some guy came through and, and uh, shot it with his bow, I guess, and the arrow was still stuck in it when he bought it. <laughs> but I thought that was pretty funny. That, that is pretty interesting. There's no doubt about it. Things, uh, and, things people do. And, and he looked at me and he told me. He said, "Yeah." He said, uh, "I sold it." too cheap. <laughs> I said, you should have left the arrow in it. Exactly. Exactly. Talk about character. Yeah. So I, I thought that was kind of a neat story. So. Ray Crilly owned probably the largest collection of scale model tractors in the world. He was known for his books on farm toys and regularly contributed to national farm toy publications. He's known by many as the father of toy tractor collecting. Ray passed away in 2019 at the age of 79. In 2022, his family decided to sell Ray's toys with Allman Vintage Power. Kurt Allman recently visited the collection where he took a video of his tour. I want to take you on a live tour of the Ray Crilly collection. I know many of you uh, knew Ray and you probably wore out several of his books. Uh, in the farm toy hobby, and it's it's really a, a legendary collection, and uh, we're we're really honored to be uh, representing the collection. I'm going to take you on a first-hand tour. So this is a this is before anything's touched. Uh, you can see it just like we find it. So okay, now uh, in the basement, uh, predominantly, what we've got down here is everything that is not John Deere or International. And, uh, and I mean, it runs the gambit. I mean, there's a, there's a customs, there's a Dingman 70 with cultivators. There's a Lincoln 77 standard, uh, getting up into here, all the early Masseys, rules, Kings, uh, you know, Ray collected everything because he was documenting, uh, things for his book. So, I mean, there was like no, uh, rhyme to reason. He just basically tried to get it all, which includes all brands and customs, uh, new old stock stuff. You know, it, it doesn't matter where you look. You know, you see something. Uh, oh, there's there's one of the big clee tracks, custom clee tracks. Uh, you see the cat on the world up there. You know, that you're seeing it just exactly like we see it uh, for the first time. Here's the, all the early toy farmers. I kind of breezed past this case uh, just because I knew I was going to come back to it. Check out the Vindex. Look at the case combine, case plow. All the early New Holland pieces. I mean, really incredible stuff, folks. And, and it is... It is slammed in. I mean, slammed in somewhere, somewhere between twenty and thirty thousand toys, probably. Um, of course, we're in the house, so this was kind of his, uh, you know, his this... office where he, uh, if he got a new piece in, he would sit down and log it. It's on the and on the card catalog system. So that, this 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 office pictures. is this, so this office is where all those books originated. Yes, sir. And uh, and 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 uh, file of every. Uh, Every tractor in the collection. Wow. <laughs> wow. You know, as you get one and write it down, that's how it was easy to... Uh, and here's his, uh, here's his plaque for the, uh, when he was inducted into the uh, Farm Toy Hall of Fame. So, uh, so that's, you know, that's what, uh, that's what we're doing here. This is, uh, he, uh, he was so well known and he did so much for the farm toy hobby. Uh, I know I probably wore out two or three of those books whenever I was coming up and, and learning farm toys. Um, New Holland sales award. There's a little uh, oil pole paperweight. A lot of great stuff. I mean, it just goes on. Now, many of you saw Ray at, at a lot of toy shows, you know, and he was always just inside the door at the National. 
And this pile, which that's the front of the pile, and it goes all the way back, that's stuff that he had saved up to take to shows. And, you know, while you may look and you see, you know, some modern stuff and some modern toys, cockship museum sets and whites, you know, in through there and some John Deere combines. <laughs> but then as I was looking up in the pile, look up, look up, how about a green sheep's foot or a sheep's foot roller in the green box? I mean, <laughs> you know, Alice's, you can look up, look up between those two boxes. That looks like a 200 Alice in the box. Um, so who knows what we're going to find in here? I mean, it's, uh, and this is deep. I mean, it goes, it goes way back. We're going to follow Barry back here. We're going to the green room first. We're going to the green room. <laughs> and when it's green, it's green. It's green. <laughs> it's not Oliver Green, which we're not holding against him. <laughs> but holy Moses, look at the John Deere. And there is everything in here. Um, you know, Ray, I think Ray's first book came out in like 1984, maybe something like that. Um, so, I mean, he was so early, you know, into the, into the hobby. Um, but he never stopped. Um, they said even he, he got a few shipments of toys in after he had passed away. Um, so, you know, he was a, he was a scholar and a historian. So, you know, you, you start looking through everything and, you know, he's got a case of 50 stuff down there and then, you know, then he's got modern stuff that, you know, just came out and, and everything in between. I thought this showcase was cool. Check this out. That's all Argentinian Sigomac toys. <laughs> I mean, that, it, how nuts is that? And just because they're loose does not mean that there's not boxes because when you look back behind, the bottoms of the showcases are full of boxes. Okay, we're gonna sneak around the corner here and go into the red room. And again, um, you know, it's just, it's kind of like the, the, what he called the green room over there. This is, this is, this is all International Harvester Toys and it will run from arcade up through stuff that's a couple years old um you know check out this showcase <clears throat> you know and there's some you know he he was probably the guy that was the most knowledgeable on uh european toys so so there's a lot of french pieces you know the french jeff pieces and boxed you know You know, up to Ertl toys. There's ice cream box, blue box, bubble box. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's case in here too. Hang on, let me back up, and I'll kind of get the wall here. Uh, so a lot of that is, uh, you know, newer, later production spec cast and Ertl, but. You know, then you get in the blue box. Two plus twos. 66 series. Down there on the bottom. And then you go and you got modern spec cast. And then boom. <laughs> you, know, you got a 560 bubble right there. White wheel, white plastic wheels. That's a good one. That's a rare variation. Kind of the more common stuff. And then you go to Stars and Stripes. And then you go, ah, 1270, no cab. 1070, no cab. 1270s. All of Ray's sheds were climate controlled. So that huge, huge help in preserving things. Golden Demos, Black Knights, Dingmans. Every time we walk back through, we see more stuff, so... Like I miss the scouts. <laughs> hey, keep an eye on the website and, uh, you know, we're going to have more details. The auctions will start in the fall. Probably we got a big job to get everything uh, packed up and move back to our facility. So, and, uh, we've got a brand new showroom at our facility. So, uh, 
you know, as the auctions come up, you are more than welcome to drop by any time and take a look at things. Uh, we've got, uh, got it set up so everything can be displayed at all times. On display in the Almond Vintage Power booth is probably the nicest original John Deere Model D in existence. This tractor belongs to the family of the late Dennis Powers, who purchased it in 1973. The Model D was kept stored inside for 25 years. In 1994, the tractor was sent to Ken and Dan Peterman, who repaired the tractor and tried to preserve it in as much original condition as possible. Brian Holst and John Deere collector David Wolf met at the Gathering of the Green to discuss this original survivor. So Dave, I know you're kind of a D aficionado. Um, we have coming up on our spring auction is this John Deere Model D tractor. Um, the story behind it right now is kind of, it, it's never really been sold for farm use. Uh, customer ordered it back in the day, uh, didn't come in in time, so he bought a couple of other tractors and told the dealer he didn't want it anymore. Dealer sat on it for a decade or two. It was never sold, and eventually a collector bought it from the dealership. Uh, put it in the storage for a couple more decades, and then Dennis Bowers bought it and put it in his collection. Uh, he's the one who made it in the state that it is today. Um, some of the unique features on this tractor, and, and you know this far more than I do, what to look for when you look for an original tractor. So tell me what a, a collector would look for for originality. Okay, on this D, it is a nice late D. So it's 48, um, was made the same configuration all the way through 1953 as this. They started to style the ones in 1939 with very little changes through the styled era. If you look at this one on the tires, it's got 30 inch tires and it says 1430. So this is an original set of tires that was made before they changed the numbers on the tiring system. So if there'd be later tires, they would say 16. 16.930. So these are original tires that I believe would have come on this tractor. You know, they may have been on and off or something, but very, very nice condition with these tires. Tractor itself, see the little dimples? That was factory. It's very nice shape. You'll note that the water separator is on it yet. Most of the D's that went in the field use, this was plugged or removed because you could not run antifreeze through the system was a system that took um, water out of your radiator system, put it through the carburetor to keep um, spark from in, uh, for things to get too hot when you burn kerosene. So this here item here is not found too much on tractors that have been through the farming. Uh, very nice starter ring on the starter. Everything's nice, the original wiring on everything, the braided feature, so some of this stuff you just can't duplicate today. We'll go around the front here a little bit. Nice original muffler on it, which I do believe was the original muffler. The decal here, look at the straightness of the grills. Little bitty scuff marks here and there. Nothing that you'd have seen in a cow yard from Wisconsin or anything coming from anything that did a lot of work. So very, very straight original. Everything here, not greasy, looking not hardly, no wear on nothing. Generator, original bracket, original voltage regulator. Look at the decals here. And this here is just perfectly straight. Little bitty decals here showing. Original mag. This is a, I do believe a Splittendorf magneto on it. So that's nice. So everything is there. Again here, the wiring harness, the lights. Everything are just nice. Tires are nice. Um, we're going to go around the back here and Brian and I noticed um, the steering wheel, no wear. The clutch pedal, or clutch lever, extremely tight. Look at this. That's the way they were come from the factory. Just no wear, no wear around the quadrant. No wear in the seat. Look at, look at this. You know, usually they're wobbled. Brake and everything. You know, the serial tag is real nice and legible. They've got this here, there, no PTO, so it's got the plate on. I personally like a D without a PTO. You have platform room for your feet. PTO was an option, but it took up all this room, and it wasn't operator comfortable. 
The gauges are original white gauges. You look real close at them. Uh, the starter button on these is a pull start button and that it'd be lights work starter button. I'm not going to pull it. I don't want to try to start it, but it's a one of these buttons that you can't buy nowadays. So when buying stuff to fix a D, this battery box cover and all these little parts are very spendy and hard to find. Not everybody making them. Brian, you got any more? Well, so basically what you're telling me is what you're seeing as far as this tractor being a, an unused, almost brand new tractor, the story matches the components. Correct. Okay. So a little bit of detective work, you can kind of assume that the story is true. Um, of course, nobody's around living yet that can authenticate this history yes, all yes, the way it, forward. It's all being handed down voice to voice, voice person to, voice. to person. And um, if we, we looked underneath, you know, I don't see any grease down there. You know, usually down in this area, we'll see axle grease or something. Mm -hmm. The brake band here from the parking brake looks like brand new. Um, this here little box here will tell me that there's never has had a PTO in it. So I, I do believe the story. I think it's original. I don't think it's ever been used or if it was, it was very little. Looks like we got a pretty nice piece coming up here on auction. Um, whoever is the winning bidder is gonna have a pretty, pretty nice authentic piece of John Deere history. Exactly. Wonderful. And yeah, I, I think it's uh, just what everybody says it is. And like I said, just look at these tires back from before they changed the numbers. And, you know, I don't even see a crack in a tire for as old, which is unreal. Even the front tires, you know, there's no little stress cracks on anything. No, nope. you can see the seam down the middle in some places yet. Yep. So the, the steel valve cover caps don't realize, but they haven't been around ever. So if you ever restored one and you're looking for steel caps, they're all plastic. So I do believe it's in original condition. Well, thank you very much for your opinion and going around it with us. It's great always having another perspective. Yep. So we do appreciate your time, Dave. So somebody looking for a very beautiful late D. John Deere, here's a pretty one. This tractor sells on the 2022 Spring Consignment Auction. For more information, visit almondvintagepower.com.